world is going to need the new financial system more than people ever believed before. Because I'm telling you now, what you're going to see in the next year or two, if everything continues on this trajectory, everything is going to be more fragmented. All these countries are going to be more fragmented than people ever could believe before or expect. Um, I don't know if you've seen a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the articles going on. Right. Certain countries are burning oil fields. Right. Of other countries and the, uh, other commodities are going to be restricted. There's new sanctions being handed out. I mean, there's a lot of activity taking place, which is funny, in my humble opinion, because it's not being highly reported on. They're keeping a lot of stuff shh, quiet, like unless you're really into gl the global economy or global economic news. I haven't seen it in a whole lot of places. Um, so what that's going to result in. Oh, and, and let's not forget the chip thing that they got going on between the U.S. and China. Right. So now they're going to be restricting the the uh, semiconductor activity even more, even more. All this as tensions are rising. Why does why is this crucial to the new financial system? Because in a multipolar world, you're going to need something to glue everything together. Now, I was saying before of how much of a a, a stake China has in the U.S. and U.S. has in China. There's a lot of overlapping business. You can't get around it. Now, some people might have said, oh, no, Mick, but well, I mean, with a little bit of research, you could just uncover that fact. That's facts. But if you think it's not facts, there was some state. I don't know what's the, oh, maybe it was Arkansas. I think it was Arkansas just passed some laws where they're going to be forcing uh, Chinese companies. This is real. They're going to force Chinese companies to give up the land that they purchased. China owns a lot of land. I was saying that before. So. There's no way around it. These uh, these powers, no matter how much they want to go at each other, they still have to continue to do some kind of business with each other. Right. Um, when you're talking about, uh, uh, let's say something like uh, the whole initiative they have where they're trying to use alternative energies. Right. Well, <laughs> now there's another battle about to happen over the restriction of lithium. Did you see that? Right. So uh, they're going at each other in a multitude of ways. Most people only looking at one way. The world is dramatically changing right before everyone's eyes. You can observe it, research it now. So so how does that affect things? Well, first of all, there's a lot of business back and forth, obviously money going back and forth uh, uh, for those batteries to get into electric vehicles. You get what I'm saying? So once again, new financial system in the future will glue all that together. They're going to have to continue to transact because China is one of the biggest producers of lithium batteries. But now that that's going to be restricted, that's going to drive prices through the roof. I'm listen, I'm telling you facts. Like, do I have the article up? Just bear with me one moment. I just want to see if I have the article up there. Here it is. And this is for this was for the other channel. I'm going to give it to you. Right. I'm just going to give it to you here to show you multipolar world. New financial system is coming. XRP, XLM, Algorand, possibly in a driver's seat, quant gluing things together. This is from oilprice.com. Serious business, folks. It says EV battery costs could surge by 22 percent. What does that do to the prices of those vehicles in the future? You see what I'm saying? So. For everything to move forward, how people have been used to it moving forward, if it's going to be that way, and I'm not sure that it is, they're going to need the new financial system to glue everything together. And now, if everything has been planned out that they're doing right, that this, you know, how they're ripping everything apart, breaking everything down, busting it down, demolishing it, if that is all a plan, then it makes sense why they're rushing the timeline, right? You've seen it. Listen, I've made a lot of posts in that members only section. Make sure you're checking it out. It's not just members only videos. Check out that. The, the, go to my channel, scroll up and down, uh, read some of those documents, watch some of those videos posted. Um, it's all there for a reason. Something big is coming. And we're, we have the keys to the car. People don't, they don't get it. They're not seeing it. Um, listen, look at what's going on here. They're rushing everything. Did you see? Listen, I'm giving out a lot of stuff right now. Did you see what the European Central Bank channel posted? I didn't even get a chance to post it on in the section yet. I'm just, I'm going to give it to you. There's so much big stuff happening, folks. Oh my word. This next year or two, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know. It's no guarantees, but things are looking insane right now. They may have to deploy earlier. Uh, uh, than expected. And, and and the DLTs are in the driver's seat if they're smart. And I think that a lot of them are. 
I think that they I think they know what's coming. So uh, the European Central Bank on their YouTube channel posted the videos where they're like, oh, well, the, 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 the um, digital euro is, is safe and you can trust it. And which is a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of nonsense. But but this is how they're floating it now. So now so their crypto is good. Everybody else's crypto is bad. But look how fast. That's the point. That's the point, folks. You see how fast they moved? It was just a little while ago where um, they were saying how they were going to test what I think was it they were testing the, the wholesale that maybe it was the wholesale. Maybe they're they're floating the idea of the retail CBDC right now. Look how fast they are moving at a lightning pace. They know that they have to connect with this system. <sighs> They need something that can flow one currency into the next instantly so that they're not cut off. And let me tell you something else. Europe is in pain. Look at what's happening with Germany. They're going to need new financial system. All the other states, France, new financial system. Why? Because Germany is going to need oil and things like that is just how it is. That's why they're having a, a hard time right now. They were cut off from certain oil because of sanctions of, of certain countries, right? They they're now I've heard some politicians. I, listen, I'm just going by articles. I don't know if these are 100 percent accurate, but I saw multiple articles. OK, and some of their politicians are like, hey, we're, we may need to interact with some of these other entities again to get our economy straight, because right now it's not looking like from what I'm reading, folks, from what I'm reading. And I need to reach out to some people because I actually know some people in Germany. I haven't had contact with them in some, some time. But it's not looking like a recession, what I'm reading. It looked like a depression to me. And then other countries like in, in Europe, of course, they are having a lack of uranium. So then what happened uh, about a couple of weeks back? You started seeing they were starting to have rolling blackouts. Now, nobody knows how much uh, uh, of their uranium stores they had or used up or no one knows that, but we just know when they had problems with another country that cut them off from uranium supply, fresh uranium supply, all of a sudden there was an energy problem. You get what I'm saying? So they're going to need to interact. How do they interact? How do they transact? How do you keep trust? How do you have traceability? How do you keep trust? How do you make sure that money gets to where it's supposed to be? And these people have traceability to get this, the materials that they need without something going missing or, or false claims. You do it through the new financial system. It's all, line, it's all lining up. It's all lining up. It's always darkest before dawn. And it pretty, it's pretty darn dark right now. I almost hate to get to some of these articles who just the, I feel like the flow off the top of my mind is just I feel like that's that's doing it right now. Like that's the best right now. Watcher dot guru. And it says this and it the implications are very serious and there is a high likelihood of this. And I'll tell you why. Just remember, just while, while I'm reading this, remember everything I just said in those uh, prior minutes and it's titled U.S. and Europe to pay in local currencies for oil. After BRICS expansion. Now, here's the thing. Now, I know a lot of you might, might not keep up with oil and stuff like that. I do sometimes on the other channel. I keep up with oil and other commodities and such uh, home buying and uh, real estate, all that stuff like that. Uh, mortgage rates, which I'm about to cover in the next video. But for a while, OPEC, well, first of all, OPEC plus had made cuts to oil. That's going to that was devastating. You saw the oil prices, the gas prices go up. Energy prices go up in the United States for a little bit, and then all of a sudden it came down. Now, I was wondering what happened. Where did those, these extra barrels of oil come from? Now, here's where they came from. Now, apparently now at first, it was about two months ago, um, United States producers had said, hey, listen, we don't, we're not going to be increasing oil output. That's number one, what they said. And then number two, they said, even if we did, it would be slowly. Oh, well, apparently they went back on their word. Doesn't surprise me. So many people are liars in this world and just that money talks, right? That money makes everything speed up. Well, apparently they did decide to increase output and that explains where the, ex the excess barrels of oil came from. Now, here's the question. How long can they keep that production up? Because not only are they supplying that to try to keep the prices within the United States within a certain range, but also they've been shipping out a lot of oil. Keep that in mind. So they've been shipping out a lot of oil. 
to the point where uh, the U.S. is starting to rise up as an exporter of oil. So then there's the question of that. How long do they can they keep that production high? So now if they if that is not something that could be sustained, especially since that goes against a lot of the agendas that they want to push with new energy and stuff like that. So I don't know how long they can keep that going because there's definitely going to be a pushback for an increase in oil output. 100% is coming. So then they may have to decrease again. You know, you know how this stuff goes. It's all this political nonsense and battles. But what's important here to me is that if that does occur, then and they have to go back to negotiations with OPEC plus countries, which obviously there's a lot of overlap with BRICS nations countries, then there's going to have to be. Uh, a middle ground reached and a lot of the OPEC plus countries want local currencies for their oil. Now, wait, that now something crucial could happen. Now, if they need to transact in local currencies, new financial system is in the driver's seat once again. To maintain that trust, they're going to have to have a neutral system. They're not going to do local currencies through SWIFT and they're definitely not going to go and do local currencies through BRICS, BRICS, BRICS bank systems or whatever system they're going to come up with. Um, it would have to be it would come from those two systems and you would have this system in the middle, new financial system and boom. And that's where all the NBFIs can come in. Some of them might be legacy systems. Some of them could be uh, Ripple, uh, Ripple XRPL based systems. If they're smart, Stellar based systems, Algorand is in there for sure. Uh, Quant, we will see. But they are in the driver's seat for now. We'll see as of now. Um, I'm trying to make some money, so I'm keeping my eye on, eye on who's out front right now. I, for now, they're out front. All right. Um, so another thing about that, and it's a little bit separate, is that if they force the United States or, or Europe, really Europe will come first because Europe is hurting the most from certain commodities that they're not going to be able to get a lot of ac access to, uh, you know, oil, uh, uranium. Uh, also, uh, is, 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 is wheat is, is the wheat because you remember the wheat was coming from a certain region and it got cut off. Right. And they can't get access to that. Oil. That wheat. Is that a problem in Europe? You guys let me know. I got a lot of a lot of good people here that are in Europe. Is, has that been a problem? Have you heard anything about that? I don't know. But so a lot of regions around the world will still need that wheat. That was a huge exporter. But still um, to keep all that together. And to transact traceability, you're going to need new financial system. Not only that. Now, I want to put this in here because they've been running with this. Oh, we're going to have CBDCs that expire. Uh, and I told people that was coming. I told, They want that control and power. So that's another thing. Right. So some entities are going to lock up their they're going to have customized CBDCs for 100 percent sure. Staking is going to go wild. When they step in, they're going to bring all the money with them. They're taking over crypto. Just make no mistake about it. You see them taking over Bitcoin already. You see them going against Ethereum. What did they say? They said most of the Ethereum is owned by who? <laughs> the big companies or billionaires. That's what they said. They came out with art articles about that today. So they're already taking over crypto. They're chasing retail out. Re retail is running for the hills. And, and so that money is going to flood into the legit cryptos. Bitcoin's going to pop off. XRP is going to pop off. In my humble opinion, it's not financial advice. Do what you want. But Bitcoin's going to pop off. Ethereum's, I think Ethereum's going to pop off. I really do. I think so. I think, I think so. Um, XRP is going to pop off. XLM is going to pop off because XRP pops off or XLM can pop off just because they got a ton of amazing things going on. And I hope that does happen. Algorand definitely going to pop off. In my humble opinion, Algorand is going to surprise everybody the most. Now, I could say that about Quant, but at the same time, Quant is not a surprise because we know what Quant does. We know all the partnerships that they have. That's not a surprise at all. And I'm going to gobble up that money. I don't know about you. I just know me. I'm here for that money. And when them banks step in and all those big businesses and the tokenization, everything steps in, I'm taking that money. Hell, you couldn't pull me off that money. You ever see somebody pull somebody off something and they get back on it? Like, I'm, I'm like that. Um, but so all of this is happening at the same time. The debt, they are. Listen, you want to talk about a reset? Are you kidding me? Are you seeing them crush everything in sight with the debt? The video yesterday that I released that was an audio version of the show was potent because I read to you from the Carnegie Right from Carnegie, I read to you the, the, the some of the key um, 
uh, 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 detrimental effects of having a skyrocketing debt. They're doing it on purpose. <laughs> oh my word! It's, it's just so hilarious. Uh, is that they're doing it out in out in the open? They're crushing everything in sight. Then they're the the raising of interest rates, keeping it higher for longer. Didn't I tell you they were crushing the small businesses? And then what happens? And all we have these articles. All these articles coming out now. Oh, the small businesses are having it hard to survive. Oh, the interest rates are killing the small businesses. I've been saying that and ringing the alarm on that for like a year and a half. Then what did I say? I told people, hey, listen, it's smart to tighten up your belt. It's smart to start looking at alternative ways to bring in that capital. Start planning. Right? I've been saying it. I told people this. Right. So but now it's too late. Now you got a tsunami of bankruptcies happening, not with just the top companies. You saw Rite Aid, Rite Aid, um, file for Chapter 11 and all that and all that type of stuff. But it's not just them. See, see, they blind everybody with, with Rite Aid and Bed Bath and Beyond and all these big companies and this yellow trucking company. And, but the small businesses are getting boom, 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 smashed and nobody even blinks an eye. You see, all these local business businesses just close down. They haven't we've been seeing that for quite some time, haven't we? Like you go to the town center and then the, the business was there and then you go back there and it's gone again. And there's a new business come opening up soon. Like they <laughs> just come and go. That's not how it's supposed to be. They're crushing everything. So the foundations of what um, the West was is no longer it's no longer that. And the people are being kept held at bay while the destruction is going on. Now, why is the destruction happening? Obviously, so they can replace it with something. Clearly, clearly. Um, so uh, uh, let's, let's move on from this article here. All right. Let's move on from this article here. Um, I want to skip this this uh, David Schwartz article and I want to go to the stellar article. Now, they like to uh, to confuse the minds of crypto people who uh, I know they don't have enough time. They had to go to work. They don't have time for research. They don't have time for research and stuff like that. They, got, they have families to take care of. They have work to go to. They have businesses to run. So these type of entities like to play with the minds of the people while they're exhausted and tired. It's a strategy that's used across the world and for centuries. And so they come in with stuff like this and pits and pit uh, 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 crypto people against each other, pit the companies against each other so that you never diversify. They, everybody, they say, well, this one is the best right here. And you put all your eggs in one basket and they know that that is the basket they're going to manipulate. Sooner or later, they're going to manipulate that basket. They're going to shake you up. They're going to shake people up, break them, take their money, right? <laughs> and leave them butt naked on the side of the road. Um, that's, that's, this, that's how it typically works. So when I see an article like this, it says this, right? And we know this is not true. It says, this is from coindesk.com. It says, Stellar, early blockchain built for payments. That's accurate. One of the best on the planet, by the way. It says, add smart contracts. Yeah, they did. But here's the see how they add this little part real sneaky to take on Ethereum. No, no, they didn't add that to take on Ethereum. Ethereum does its own thing. Everybody has space in here. That's like Microsoft has space. Apple has space. IBM has space. But all of a sudden it comes to crypto and only Ethereum. It has to be only Ethereum. It has to be only Cardano. As there'll be only Solana. You see how this you see how they use that technique It's because we're still in the nascent phase and they don't want everybody diversifying to make all that money. They don't want everyone to to uh, mistakenly come into millions and billions diversifying. No, they want you in one because they know maybe that one doesn't go off. They can take over the rest of them or they can shake you up with this one, because when you're diversified, you're not easily shaken. You're not easily shaking. That's like when silver goes down, I'm not worried about silver because I know my platinum is probably doing great. My palladium is probably doing great. My gold is probably sitting pretty. You get what I'm saying? So there's a balance to your portfolio, so to speak. Well, I hate to say portfolio, but it's a balance to what you have when you diversify. You're well balanced. You're not spread thin. You're not spread thin. You're well balanced. They don't want the people balanced. So they say stuff like this or oh, to take on Ethereum. No, Stellar does his own thing completely different from Ethereum. We're closer related to Ripple and we're and we're not rivals. We're partners. We do two different things. Work in the same realms. I don't I don't even care what the people from the company say. We don't step on each other's toes. Right. There's enough money for everybody. That's clear now. That's clear it says here, the nine year old project, one of the earliest major blockchains is getting a facelift to incorporate smart contracts, quote unquote, smart contracts, which theoretically could attract new 
applications and users and potentially more demand for the XLM token that I agree with. Here's what they did it for. They added smart contracts for the big money. We all know this. They added smart contracts because who was requesting it first? Don't you remember the early articles of Franklin Templeton from uh, before they announced they were using Stellar and Franklin Templeton was talking about how they wanted, how they loved the idea of smart contracts? Hmm. And then you heard Stellar talking about Soroban. This was a while ago. And then on top of that, they did it for Wisdom Tree, who now, if you didn't see the other videos, <laughs> man, we, we dropped some gems in some of those videos. Gems. And Wisdom Tree said that they're going to be expanding their use of their Wisdom Tree Prime app. Didn't I tell you they were going to do that? They did it for Wisdom Tree. They did it for the United Nations. Can anybody tell me why? I'm going to keep asking this question. Why did the White House call Stellar? Can you please tell me? They bragged on it. I didn't say it. Stellar said it. As soon as they, they were so excited, they had to put that out. I don't know if they removed that tweet or not, but we all saw it. Why did the White House call Stellar? You mean to tell me that Stellar's not respected? It's highly respected if the White House is calling them. Something big is on the table for Stellar. They're keeping it quiet. In my humble opinion, you don't have to believe, believe me, agree with me. I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm just a humble researcher with a YouTube channel. And I'm just very thankful I have one to talk to people that might be like minded. Something big, Stellar's covering it up. This is why they, they're so like happy all they're like, oh yeah, Stellar. They got Idris Elba at um at Meridian and <laughs> but they got in deep with the freaking World Economic Forum. The controller of presidents and prime ministers, the puppet master themselves, the World Economic Forum making Pinocchio dance. Something big is come. That's why they got the smart contracts involved. I don't listen, I don't. I'm not a mind reader. Or I just go by the research, but look at the trajectory of Stellar. And you tell me that what they're building towards aren't massive, possibly, possibly massive announcements. I read an article. I didn't cover it on the channel, but I read an article and um, it was it was very interesting. I can't remember where it was written, but they were saying something about there were a lot of big companies that were interested in a few blockchains. There was like three of them and one of them was stellar. One of them was, and I, and I agree with it 100%. I said, I knew it. I'm not the only one seeing these articles. I'm not, I go by articles so anybody could read them. There's a lot of us researching every day. I'm not the only one, right? And some people research probably even more than I do, but I do my best. I tell you that much. That's why they put in smart contracts for the big money. They can't get to it and they want to. They want to be number one. Remember all those little bickerings back and forth between Jeb McCaleb and, and various people from Ripple? That's because they want to be number one. They want to be the best. But if you're going to be the best, then what does that mean? That means you get to the money. You get to the big projects. You run everything. They have the crypto. They have a crypto. They have a native crypto. XLM. I know I'm, I'm keeping my energy high so I can so I can keep on. um getting this out the best way that I can. If I let my energy drop, then it won't be the best. I'm on fire right now. That's how I feel. I'm on fire. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it up because I was super tired earlier, right? And I just got a bolt of energy. So if somebody was, you know, um, there were a couple of people. I don't know why they were doing this. It got me fired up. They were walking their dog on the old man's lawn over here. You know what I mean? The older, older gentleman. And um, I was like, what the hell was this sound outside? They were talking real loud. They're walking their dog on his lawn. They were letting their dogs like wrestle. Like I look almost like their dogs were their dogs were fighting. Now, this elder gentleman been here for the longest time. He don't bother anybody. He quiet stay to himself. And he cuts his lawn and stuff like that. Goes back in his house. You know, I know he don't like stuff on his lawn because there was a little fox that I liked. You know, I called him Mr. Fox. You know, I keep it simple. Mr. Fox and Mr. Fox used to live under his bush. You know, and if Mr. Fox would come across the street and come through, uh, come through my backyard and stuff like that, he ain't bother nobody. He'd just walk on, do his thing. Um, he'd probably do his hunting because there's a bunch of like um, hares around here, not rabbits, hares. They're huge, by the way, huge. And he'd probably come over and do his hunting and things like that. But anyway, then the old man, uh, the elder gentleman, I keep saying old man, the elder gentleman chased um, the fox off his property and stuff after a while. <laughs> I don't think he knew he was living under there. So I know he don't want, he doesn't want that kind of stuff to have these, so ha to have these dogs like wrestling on his property. It just, it caught my ear first of all, cause I'm like, who's making all this noise. And then I went out there and I see them doing that. And it's like, 
why? Like, I like, why would you do that? You know, it could it could be very upsetting to that that guy. You know, and he like I said, he'd been around here forever. So anyway, that just got me fired up. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just like I don't like disrespectful stuff. They they wouldn't want someone bringing some strange dogs onto their property, would they? You know, get what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. I was just thinking. So now I got my my energy is high. Yeah, I share some things. Why not? <laughs> I don't never know what's coming tomorrow. Maybe there is no tomorrow for me. I'm gonna share right now. I'm gonna share right now. Yeah, that's how I think about things. I give everything right now, 110% every day, every second, because I don't know if I got tomorrow. That's how I, that's, that's how I live. That's how I think. Um, you know, listen, I lost too many people close to me in my life. They're gone. I can never talk to them again, you know, so I know that it mattered when I treated them well those last few times, or I said something great to them or did some work for them or lifted a couch for them or, you know, gave them a hug. That was the last time ever. So guess what? Every second of every day, Alphanine gives 110%. 100, uh, so, so I leave nothing. I leave nothing behind. Right. I leave it all on the mat, as my coach used to say, he used to say, Mick, he used to say, leave everything on the mat, Mick, give it your all. And when I started doing that, I was demolishing dudes, period. I was, <laughs> let me tell, let me tell you, I'm telling you, I, like, I'm telling you, people, if you only knew, you know, I was, when I left everything on the mat, I didn't start out. I, I, I became a winner by working hard. I learned that throughout my life. Work hard, you'll win. Give it a little bit every time. You can always grow. If your body can't grow anymore, your mind definitely can grow. But at the time when I was young, I was working out hard. I trained every single day, multiple hours a day, went to multiple camps. And I learned from the best of them. We had one of the best people to ever do the sport in wrestling came and trained um, one of our camps. And um, a lot of people were tired. They were aching because we would do training almost all day. You can go to different classes all day. But I, I didn't I didn't miss that class. I went there and trained with that individual. One of the greatest of all time to this day, his record. He had an undefeated record. And um, I learned from that. I learned from him. I learned from the guys around me. Some of them were national champs. And I took that with me. I said, well, I want to work. I'm going to use these techniques. And I gave it all like my coach said. And I feel like I did pretty good. That's all I'm going to put out there. Like, I feel like I did pretty good. So every single day I leave it all on the mat is the point. Right. So if I come on the camera, I might tell somebody, hey, I love you guys out there. I might say, hey, you're the best. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it all. I feel good doing that. That's what I do. That's that's my purpose. I'm not shying away from anything. You know, I'm going to give it all. And I'm not letting anything get in my way. Don't let anything get in your way. If something get in my way, it's gonna have to get about. It's gonna have to get up out of my way, because I'm gonna move it out of my way ferociously if I have to. Nope, I have to keep going forward. I have to keep going forward. There's nothing. I'm no. I refuse to be stopped. Yeah. So so you know I think. So that's that's what it is, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love every single one of you out there. Um, never feel unloved. Uh, never feel like you're you're you're, um, you're unworthy. You're definitely worthy. You were born for a reason. You are here for a reason. You've done special things. Period. And I don't want to hear anything else. So now we're gonna end off here. Um, I have so many articles, but I I, I just been loving just talking to you guys straight from whatever's in here. Heart, soul, what, spirit. What do you prefer? It don't matter to me. Whatever's in here, I've been loving speaking to you from that. All right. So now let's end off here with a little bit of gold news. I love gold. I do. You see how everybody's running the gold now? Look at that. That's them running. Oh, yeah. Oh, Costco. Costco has gold now. Like, really? You want to get it from Costco? You want to get your gold? You don't want to get it from somewhere reputable? Do you have a metals, a precious metals tester to make sure that that metal is legit? Because I don't trust Costco. I don't care what Costco say. Just my opinion. I don't trust them. But a tester. But if they, I don't know. If they, but they, do they only have gold there? Because that's where all the articles been written about now. Oh, Costco has gold. Um, yeah, you better check that gold. There's a lot of scam gold that goes around, you know, physical gold uh, and silver as well. Check it. Don't just you don't want to be years later. You try to move that gold, find out that it's it's not real. You know what I mean? Or it's partially fake or something like no. Check it. Check it on the spot. Matter of fact. So anyway, um, there's the different ways you can do that. But. They're all running the gold is what I'm saying. So many people buying physical gold now. Let's cover a little bit of gold news. This is from Kitco.com. 
com. I like that right there. Like that. Wait, which eyebrow is that? Look, the camera is like reversed. This camera is weird too. It always makes me look like I'm to the side. I cannot correct that. It looks makes me look like I'm to the side, and then it's like I'm doing this eyebrow, but that that eyebrow comes up like on the camera. It's like I don't know. This camera is crazy. Oh man, I used to be so much better with technology, but I think technology just got crazy. That's what it is. Not my lack of skills with technology. It's just te technology has gotten crazy. All the phones are different. All the phones are different. All the cameras are different. <laughs> different different settings and. Oh, my word. We're recovering again. Oh, yeah. Gold news, right? <laughs> so it says time to increase allocation to gold. JP Morgan's Kolanovich says, OK, let's see what he's talking about. Equity markets in the U.S. and around the world remain overvalued and geopolitical risks continue to intensify. You don't say I've been telling people this. They didn't care. They didn't listen. They didn't get any. And so now it's looking like, well, if things continue the way that they are, I'm telling you, gold is going to go through the roof. Not only that, people may need some if the banks keep on having errors and locking people's accounts, locking people's value up. Had $81 billion locked up in JP Morgan Chase in Japan, but that's not a, that's not alone. That's not an isolated thing because in the US and in Canada, people have been getting their accounts locked. But here's the thing. Here's the difference. See, over there, all the news comes over here and we get to hear about it. Over here, when people get their accounts locked, even though we've been covering it on the channel, they bury that and you don't hear that on the mainstream news. Mm -hmm. And the, <laughs> oh man, it's been so crazy with these banks. The, what was it? The lady, they had an article about a, a, a lady who had $200,000 get locked up in a bank and they wouldn't give it to her. Like it's unbelievable. This just keeps happening. So and, and the trust in banks is going down. People are running to gold and other things, other things as well. It says here, um, U.S. Uh, uh, equity markets in the U.S. and around the world remain overvalued and geopolitical risk continue to intensify, making it a good time for investors to increase their allocation to gold. It's been a good time for a long time. The banks are, are in massive trouble. I just made a post in the members only section. Did you see it? Yep, they're in more trouble. Like it's it's just increasing. I didn't like to see that one entity in trouble though. I'll say that. They're one of ours. I didn't like to see I don't like to see them. I want them to do do well so we could take their bank money. But they're in trouble, right? So uh anyway, so in the investment bank's uh latest global market strategy report, Kalanovic noted that while markets are off their early October lows, the medium term outlook remains negative with headwinds stronger and tailwinds weaker says, I mean, going by what? Like, what do you mean? There's so much going on in the world, so much uncertainty. They just have bank runs in China. And that Evergrande, let me tell you something, that Evergrande has far reaching consequences and ripple effects around the world in the West as well. But OK, all right. I mean, so I think they say things like this sometimes to keep people out of gold. It's like they have to say something positive because it's looking good, but they, they don't want to say too much positive. They got to throw in a little bit of negative, sprinkle a little bit of negativity in there. They don't want too many people getting in there. No, no, no. Right. Uh, they want to they want themselves to be able to buy a little bit low and then ride that price up and then do what they always do. Sell. Right. And they sell at the top, get a little profit. Kalanovic said he believes that most of the negative effects from high rates are still to come. We'll see about that. Quote, delinquencies in consumer loans and corporate bankruptcies are starting to move higher. I've been saying that, haven't I told you? And this trend is likely to continue absent a cut in rates, unquote, he, he wrote. Quote, the flare up of geopolitical risk adds another headwind and increases. How is that a headwind? Usually, usually when there's geopolitical uh, tensions and risk is very positive for a goal because people retreat from the banks that you may not be able to get access to. Am I wrong about that? You tell me. Uh, you saw what just happened and then gold went up. The situation proves itself. You saw the things that happened. Boom, 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 bang, bang, bang. And then gold went up. I, I mean, I don't know how much more clear that can that can become. But let's go here. It says the bank reversed last month's cut to their model portfolios duration exposure and is putting more into bonds and commodities. And gold in particular, exactly. See, you had to tell the truth. You waited a couple paragraphs, so you had to tell the truth. You're getting deep in gold. Welcome. Welcome. You're a little late, but yeah, welcome. It says, quote, while it remains uncertain whether bonds have bottomed, <laughs> they're having a sell off right now. They push those yields up. We'll see what happens. We will see what the bears are in control. We will see what happens. 
Will they go back to bonds? They're playing a little bit now in the markets. Why some of the markets have been a little bit green. Crypto been a little bit green. But will they go back now that the yields are higher? Because right now they weren't they weren't buying for the lo- a little while now. We will see. It says we add back 1% to our government bond allocation, given geopolitical risk, cheap valuations and less pronounced positioning, unquote, he said. It says, quote, we additionally increase our allocation within commodities to gold, both as geopolitical hedge. Of course, like, so see, it's, it's so crazy to me. In one breath, they say one thing. And in another breath, they, they turn around a few minutes later and say the exact opposite. Unbelievable. What happened to the headwind statement? It says, and given, <laughs> given an expected retracement in real bond yields. Oh, man. It says JP Morgan wrote in the report that they project gold, uh, spot gold prices to average around $1,920 per ounce in Q4 2023. Their quarter by quarter projections for 2024. And what's propping that up? What's propping that price up right now? It is... Uh, uh, um, refuge uh, capital from people who are trying to pr- protect their value from geopolitical tensions. Oh yeah. Not only that, but uh, some of the financial calamities that were happening, like the people that were having bank runs when it came to the whole the China situation. Right. All right. Okay. Safe haven. Gold is the most trusted safe haven. Simple as that. If you want to protect your, your capital, not just get it just completely destroyed, you know, and taken. It says their quarter by quarter projections for 2024 are $1,950 in Q1. Yeah, they're playing it safe. Um, $2,030 in Q2. Why? Wait a minute. That is interesting. Anybody make it this far in the video? Look at that jump. Why $2,030 in Q2? What? There's no way without a major catalyst, gold gets there. How did it get there before? It got there before with the banks failing in the springtime. So why this Why this projection here and now? What are they anticipating happening in Q2? That's huge for them to say such a thing. Then they go even crazier. Some they're they're telling people something. I hope people made it to this part of the video. Let me know in the comment section. They're look, listen to this. 2024, 1950. Oh, we're eating. Uh in Q it says in uh two thousand thirty dollars in Q2. Oh, we're looking real good. Two, we, we got gold at a super low. This says two thousand one hundred dollars in Q3. And get this. I really don't like JP Morgan, but I'm liking them a little bit. (laughs) I'm liking them a little bit right now. $2,175 Q4. What? Let me tell you something, beautiful folks. I had to lift up the microphone for this one. Usually, they're lowballing it. Usually... They're giving you the low numbers, which means we're going. I don't know about we. I don't know who (laughs) has gold out there. I only speak for myself, not financial advice. But it looks like a lot of us might be making a whole lot of clams. Yeah, a whole lot of clam chowder. What's what's more names for for money? People keep telling me all the names. Clams, some guap, chicken, shells. I don't know. I can't think all the other <laughs> words for money. I love it. I love all the different words for money. But anyway, so there you have it. That's crazy right there. Whoa. I hope it happens. Wow. But but they're definitely telling us something's coming. It has to be a, a huge catalyst, huge catalyst, like banks going down. I think we all know what's coming. I think that's what they're relying on. They know because they're going to th- th- make no mistake about it. They're going to acquire some of those banks. So they're definitely keeping up with the commercial real estate problem, the unrealized losses problems. That's just a little bit. That's just a little bit. Capital flight. They've been a victim of massive capital flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they know. Uh huh. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, folks, let's get to the money.